Questions 53, 55, 56 and 64. Uh, Deputy Gwendolyn to introduce the question. Yeah, and Deputy Berwyn and O'Sullivan and Wallace will be speaking as well. Basically, Minister, I've asked you this question before, and the question is basically, will you facilitate a Dáil debate on CETA before the summer recess, and why a debate hasn't been held to date? And secondly, second part of my question is, if does the Minister believe that the investment court system comp is compliant with the uh, Irish okay. Constitution? Basically, do you, on, do you believe we'll have to have a referendum on that? Deputy or Minister. Three, four questions together. Um, so I propa propose to take PQs, the four together that I've just said, 53, 55, 56 and 64. And on the 30th of October 2016, the EU-Canada Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement, the CETA, was signed by representatives from Canada, the EU and its member states. On 15 February 2017, the European Parliament voted in support of the provisional application of CETA. And as I've said many times before in this House, the provisions relating to investment protection, investment dispute settlement and the investment court system are excluded from the provisional application. The main provisions offering new opportunities for Irish industry and Irish business will come into force once Canada has completed its own procedures. The process of ratification can now commence in the Member States according to their constitutional requirements. Um, in Ireland's case, the Dáil will be part of the final decision to ratify the agreement. Canada is currently finalising its internal implementation procedures to allow for its ratification of the agreement, and that's expected that they will provisionally apply from summer 2017. The Council decision on provisional application of CETA is available on the public register of documents on the Council's website. The document reference is 10974-16. This decision provides that the majority of the provisions of the agreement will be provisionally applied. <coughs> Deputy O'Sullivan has asked which chapters will be provisionally applied and which will not. The position is as follows. Only Articles 8.1 to 8.8 Articles 813 and Article 815, with the exception of Paragraph 3, and 816 will be provisionally applied in Chapter 8, and only insofar as foreign direct investment is concerned. Paragraphs 3 and 4 of Article 13.2, Articles 13.3 to 13.4, Articles 13.9 and 13.21 and 13 of Chapter 13 shall not be provisionally applied in so far as they concern portfolio investment, protection of investment on the resolution of investment disputes between investors and states. Article 2012, Article 27.3 and Article 27.4 and Paragraph 7 of Article 28.7 shall not be provisionally applied. The provisional applications of Chapter 22 23, 24 of the agreement shall respect the allocation of competences between the un Union and the United and the Member States. Uh, regarding Deputy Wallace's question, CETA will establish a regulatory cooperation forum to discuss regulatory issues of mutual interest and develop bilateral cooperation activities. The forum is expected to enhance information sharing between Canada and the EU regulators, facilitate the development of more compatible regulatory measures, resulting in fewer, fewer barriers to trade, and to make it easier for the EU to do business in Canada. The forum shall be co-chaired by a senior representative of the Government of Canada and a senior representative of the European Commission and relevant officials from the EU and Canada. The forum cannot change existing or develop new legislation on its own, and it will not have any decision-making powers. It can only make recommendations to regulators and to legislators. 
any initiative entailing a change in EU regulations can only be introduced and pursued outside the CETA framework in compliance with the ordinary legislative procedure of the European Union. I fully support the provisional application of the agreement. I am of the view that there should be no impediment to Irish companies immediately taking advantage of the provisions of CETA, including eliminating tariffs on almost all of key exports, access to the Canadian procurement market, easing regulatory barriers and ensuring more transparent rules for market access, such as a single website for public procurement. To answer Deputy Maurice Quinlevin, I believe that it is important to wait to see the benefits of CETA come into being before CETA is put before the doll for ratification. Then we can have a fully informed evidence-based debate on the value of the agreement to Ireland. Specifically to uh, address Deputy, uh, Deputy Bruhan's uh, question regarding the EU-US Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, TTIP, following the US presidential election, the negotiations are now effectively on hold. I get the first supplementary yes. comes from Deputy uh, Quinlevin. Um, as you know, I previously made my position crystal clear in this debate, and I've asked you about do you think we need a referendum? You didn't answer that question. I think it's vitally important that elected representatives in Ireland have the opportunity to scrutinise this trade deal and debate its pros and cons here in the Dáil. On numerous occasions, I've called for a debate to be held on CETA, yet the government continues to ignore the issue. Sinn Féin has serious concerns about aspects of this deal and feels a part of it will have a negative impact on Irish SMEs and the farming community in particular. Also, legal advice obtained by my, my colleague Matt Carty, MEP, has indicated that the invest investment court system contained in CETA is not compliant with the Irish Constitution. This approach of implementing first and debating is later is a drastic departure from normal democratic principles, and the only conclusion I can come to as to why the government will not facilitate a debate on this topic is because they are anxious that deficiencies in the agreement will be highlighted by the opposition parties, including ourselves. So, Minister, I don't believe you answered my questions, and today I again, Minister, ask you to outline the date for when this agreement will be debated here in the Dáil. With the permission of the members, I can take the four supplementaries, if that's okay. Uh, the next is Deputy Tommy Brohan. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, well, it, it is extraordinary, Minister, you're saying that uh, you're provisionally we're, we're going to apply these uh, many sections of the CETA agreement uh, without uh, a debate in this House, without the approval of this House. Uh, it seems an extraordinary uh, way to proceed, and given in particular, I suppose, the decision of the European Court of Justice um, in relation, I think, to the Singapore um, uh, agreement, uh, that, um, uh, you know, that it, it, the approval of, the, of national parliaments where it required when there's an investor state dispute settlement uh, uh, mechanism. And, and just on the positive sides of, of CETA, I mean, uh, does it, does it actually, will it actually involve uh, your own agencies like IDA and EI and so on, liaison, for example, with the provincial governments of Canada, with the Atlantic provinces, with Quebec, with Ontario, etc.? Um, uh, and what, 99% uh, of tariffs are gone. Well, what, what's the 1% of tariffs that are, I mean, what, what issues are we talking about there? What, what goods are still included? Um, I, I went across to look at TTIP. Um, in, your, in the reading room in your department um, and looked at uh, some of the grave concerns we've had about that. You're saying now that that agreement is totally on ice, given uh, President Trump's um, attitude to the Trans-Pacific Agreement um, and, indeed, his attitude to, uh, to uh, agreements with Canada, to NAFTA as well. Uh, but um, is the department still, uh, still um, if you like, working on the possibility that uh, the TTIP negotiations uh, will resume? Uh, thanks, Ken. Uh, Deputy Martin Sullivan is next. Minister, <clears throat> I hope the information that you gave there will clarify for people what chapters are provisionally included and which sections of chapters also, because to date what people have been telling me is that they have been trawling through the EU documents and what has emerged is the lack of real, reliable and specific information in the public domain on the provisional application. There was an EU press release which said that the ICS system that's supposed to reform the ISDS within CETA has no basis in fact or law, and 
and it's not mentioned at all in the CETA legal text. I do believe it is vital that we wait on the judgment from the European Court of Justice. There was a ruling on the Singapore agreements that trade agreements with ISDS are mixed agreements and so they will require unanimous agreement at the European Council of Ministers and ratification at EU national and regional parliaments. So the question will be then, when will the provisional application begin? Because there are real fears that this could be a race to the bottom and that instead of looking at jobs, we're going to be looking at very poor quality jobs and there won't be decent income. Uh, Deputy Wallace. Thank you, Alison Corder. Minister, I asked you the, uh, the way in which the regulatory cooperation forum set up by the CETA uh, the agreement would function. And you tell me that it will uh, mean fewer barriers, make it easier for EU countries to do business, and the forum will only be able to make recommendations, so it will have no effect on how regulation is formed. Minister, what you're telling us is that the forum uh, is just a talking shop, will have uh, no powers, and uh, is really just uh, a, a, another uh, smokescreen. So, in actual fact, Minister, uh, it, doesn't, it won't really serve a purpose. And the truth be told, whether we like it or not, and you say, Minister, it's going to make it easier for EU countries to do business. Well, this government has already boasted, and the last one, that this is a great little country to do business in. And you know what? It is, if you're a big business. If you're a small business, a family business, this is not an easy country to do business. A great place if you're running a multi-corporation, great place if you're a big foreign direct investment, but by God, try and run a small business in Ireland today. It isn't easy. But uh, CETA will make the playing field even less level and more unfair. I can't see in God's name what benefit there is going to be for the people of Ireland in it. Hey, Minister, to respond to the four. Thank you very much. First of all, um, um, I'll take them all together if you don't mind. I mean, you're talking about small business, Dr. Wallace. Can I assure you that there's about approximately 285,000 small business owners? There's about 700,000 people employed in that sector. And can I assure you that in the Department of Jobs and me as Minister and the two Ministers here with me, that is our main focus to make sure that jobs are coming through. And believe it or not, we are having a trade mission next week to Canada and there are 25 plus Irish companies participating in the upcoming trade mission to Canada. And the only reason they're going there is to sell their products. And the, when they do sell their products and when there is trade, that equals jobs. And that's what's important to us. And it's really now important that we go out and that we find markets because of Brexit. So I am, as a minister, all in favour of going to Canada and finding whatever business that we can in Canada. Can I just give you a few statistics? And I mean, I love listening to you talking about poor jobs and small jobs and and badly paid jobs. These companies are paying well. From Canada, from Can first of all, there are Canadian companies here in Ireland employing thousands of people, approximately 2,800 people, and that they, that they are investing um, over nearly 11 billion into this country. But more interesting, if you look at Irish companies trading with Canadian companies, and in 2015, Foreign direct investment stocks in Canada from Ireland amounted to over 4 billion. There are over 400 EI client companies doing business in Canada. And please God, as a result of our trade mission next week, we will have more people doing, doing business with Canada. There's exactly 50 companies with a local presence in Canada employing an estimated 6,000 EI clients, including Kingspan, Leading Edge, Keyword, uh, Keyword Studios, Kerry's Group. And in 2015, Enterprise Ireland client companies exported more than 280 million in goods and services to the Canadian market. And when I hear that, I say that equals jobs. Export growth to Canada amongst Enterprise Ireland clients was greater than 7% in Thank 2015 you. and 14% in 2014. I'll answer the other questions. Yeah, I'm going to do a quick round at your... Um